This is the PCB we will see in this video. The circuit of this board is a mix between this board, this other board and this one and the result is a battery charger with a boost converter output. Together we have a battery charger, a battery protection and the boost converter output. So why have made this PCB? Well, if we look back at many of my projects, you will see that I use a lot this module here. This is used to charge a 3.7 volts LiPo battery. But then I also use the Arduino a lot and other digital modules and this will usually work at 5 volts. So for that I add another module to my circuit and that module is this one, a small boost converter. I usually have to fix the potentiometer at a certain value so the output is 5 volts and then I glue that potentiometer in place so it will stay at that voltage. But wouldn't be nice to have the battery charger and the boost converter on the same board? And not just that, but to have a fixed value resistor instead of the potentiometer so the voltage will be always 5 volts, because that is a very common voltage for my project. Well that's exactly what this PCB will do. We also have a few extra components on the PCB and we will see the use of each one in this video. If you consider supporting my work check my Patreon page, the links are below. Also make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. So guys, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. So here we have the PCB for this project. And before we start, if you want this same PCB, just go below, download the Gerber files and then go to glcpcb.com. Select code now and on this page upload the zip file you have just downloaded. In my case I've selected red color for the solder mask, because it looks awesome. I select 5 PCBs and make the order for only $2 plus shipping. The order process is very easy. Ok guys, so let's get back to our project. Let me explain why I wanted this PCB and if everything goes well, I also want to order the SMT service and produce this module with all the components already soldered and start use this with my project. Because for example, months back I've made this magic ball project. Inside we have a 3.7V Lion battery. But to charge that battery I've used this small module with a USB connector. And this is a 3.7V battery charger and protection module. But then I had to use a boost converter in order to get the 5V, because the Arduino, the DF player, the gyro module and so on will work at that voltage. And the same will go for this other project, for the 6 in 1 meter. I also had a small battery and a charger. For the radio chat project as well, I've also used the same charger. For the GPS distance meter project the same thing and even for the radio controller project, but in that case the boost converter was set to 12V and we have a 3S battery inside. And if you remember the old multimeter project, I've also had the same battery charging module. And there are a lot of other projects where I've used the small boost converter to get the 5V, so basically each time that I have a battery based project together with an Arduino or other digital module that works at 5V, I need to combine at least 2 modules to charge the battery and also to boost the output at 5V or 12V. I found such a module on eBay, the Wemos D1 charging module. The problem with this board is that it will only charge the battery and create the 5V output. But something is missing and that is the battery protection feature. And those are usually protection for overcharge, over discharge and short circuit protection. That's why this module is not good for me and I will use the combination of these two modules. This one is based on the TPVOS and I've already used this IC for my smartwatch project and be able to charge up the battery of the watch. But the next IC on this board is the DW01 and this is a battery protection IC and it will protect the 3.7V battery for overcharge, over discharge and for overcurrent. The last component on this board is the FS8205A and these are just some switching MOSFETs for enabling or disabling the output and by that protect the battery. I use Easy EDA to create my PCBs. So first I import the DP4056 IC. We have to take a look at the datasheet in order to see the basic configuration of this chip. As you can see we have some indicator LEDs, some capacitors, 
the air plug resistor and the battery is connected at the output. But also as you can see, the air plug resistor value will determine the charging current limit. I will use a 2 kilo ohm resistor and by that limit the charging current at 580 milliamps. Ok, but till now, between this IC and the battery, there is no protection yet. Now I go to Easy EDA and import the DW01 chip. Once again, on its datasheet, we can see the typical application and connections. But as you can see, to enable or disable the connection to the battery, we need these MOSFETs here. So that's why I now search for the FS8205A IC. This component already has the MOSFETs inside just one chip so the PCB will be more compact. I make all the connections as in the datasheet and connect in series the protection ICs. One thing that is missing is the USB connector and the input and battery pads. So I add those to the circuit as well and I'm using a micro B USB connector. So now the charging part of the circuit is ready. It's now time to add the boost converter part. I will use the same IC that this board is using and that is the MT3608 and is this small IC here. As you can see, the board also needs a 22 microhenries inductor, some resistors and the input and the output capacitors. Once again we take a look at the datasheet and we can see the typical configuration for this IC as well. We can see this R1 and R2 resistors. We need to carefully select the value of these resistors in order to set the output voltage. For that we go to this part of the datasheet, and here we have the output value formula according to these resistors. Since VREF is 0.6 volts, if I set R2 to a value of 1 kilo ohms, then in order to get 5 volts at the output, we need to set R1 to 7.5 kilo ohms. But if I want 12 volts at the output, we need to set R1 to 20 kilo ohms. But here is what I will do. I now add a switch to my circuit. I place the R2 resistor of 1K, but now on one side of the switch I connect the 7.5 kilo ohm resistor and on the other side I connect the 20 kilo ohm resistor. In this way, when I flip the switch, it will change the output from 5 volts to 12 volts, so we have double output for one PCB. You can add a multiple switch and more resistors and set the output to different values because this boost converter IC will get up to 24 volts. I add the 22 microhenries coil, the output diode and the capacitors and now the boost converter part is also done. We now save the file and pass the design to PCB. I will place all the components only on the top side because I'm planning to order an SMT assembly process in the future and for that I need all the SMT components only on one side of the PCB. As you can see, for the input we have the USB connector and these two pads. Then we have the charging IC and the protection chips. Finally we have the boost converter with the coil and the output switch. The battery will be connected to these two pads and the output will be on these pads here. The size of the PCB is of only 17.7mm by 38.3mm. I save the file and order it at glcpcb. Click the Gerber button and select order at glcpcb.com. I select the red solder mask and 5 PCBs because I will use this only for test for now. I make the payment and order the PCBs for only $2. Ok, so I receive the boards and all the components that I need, so let's start solder everything. The ICs, the resistors and capacitors, the SMD switch, the coil and the diode. I start with all the battery charging components, so the TP4056, the DW01 and the FS8205 and the rest of the resistors and capacitors. I also add a green and a red LED and the USB connector. I now connect a 3.7V LiPo battery at the battery pads and connect the USB cable with 5 volts. The red LED will turn on, so the charging process is enabled. When the battery reaches 4.2V, which is the charging cutoff voltage, the green LED will turn on and the charging process is stopped. So guys, the charging process works. I now keep soldering the rest of the components. The boost converter IC, the coil, the diode and the output voltage resistors and the switch. Now I make sure that the switch is at 5 volts. I connect once again the battery and measure the output. And as you can see it's 5 volts. So the boost converter works. 
because the battery voltage is around 4.2 volts. So now we can make some more tests. Instead of the battery, I now connect the power supply and set it to 3.7 volts, which is the nominal voltage of a 1S LiPo battery. The output is still 5 volts, so till now we are good. Now let's add a load at the output. Here I have a 15 ohms resistor, so at a 5 volts output, as you can see, it will create a current flow of 440 milliamps. But the output is still 5 volts, so till now everything is ok. But now I add two of these resistors in parallel, so a resistance of 7.5 ohms. That would create a current flow of at least 700 milliamps. I connect the resistor but the voltage is still 5 volts. But now we have a problem. I've used a very small 22 microharis inductor. And this one can't handle this much current, so it will start burning out. And as you can see it starts smoking and after a while the output voltage will decrease. So for sure if I want more current, I will have to place a bigger inductor. But that's why we make these cheap PCB prototypes. So after some tests, we can get the results and design a new and better PCB, right? I soldered an external bigger inductor of 22 microhenries and this time I had no problems. And I was delivering 1.3 amps. Ok, now let's test the over discharge feature. I lowered the voltage below 2.6 volts. And as you can see, the output from the boost converter automatically will turn off. Even if I increase back the voltage above 2.6 volts, the output is still turned off. Only by connecting the USB connector, the TP4056 will give a signal and reactivate the output. So the over discharge protection works with no problems. Ok, so finally I short circuit the output. And once again it will go directly to zero. Which means that the short circuit protection also works. Now the PCB has a different problem, but is very easy to fix. Look what happens if I change the switch from 5 volts to 12 volts. As you can see the voltage won't change. But that's not because the circuit is not working, and I can prove that. I set the switch back to 5 volts and I also have to change the boost converter IC, because the other one got damaged. I connect the battery and as you can see the output is again 5 volts. But now, before I switch to 12 volts, I remove the battery. Now I switch to 12 volts and I add back the battery. And now the output is 12.5 volts, so the switch works. So why the IC got damaged before? Well, if you don't remove the battery, when you switch from one resistor to the other, for a very short moment, the boost converter IC will be connected to nothing. So I think that will create a huge current spike, or maybe a short circuit, or maybe just desynchronize the converter IC, and the results are very bad. To solve that we could just remove the battery each time. Or maybe add a second switch between the battery and the charging part and the boost converter part of the circuit. I've made a second version of the PCB, and since now I have all the results, I've changed a few components. First I want more current output, so I have to change the inductor to a bigger one. In case of this module here, we can have up to 2 amps. So since I'm using the same IC and the same coil, my PCB will also have that current output. And second, I will add another switch, to enable or disable the boost converter output, and by that separate the battery. With these two components, the PCB will be a bit bigger, but still have a good enough size. I've made the PCB with thick tracks, so it could withstand the current. The new and better PCB is done. And I say it once again. That's why we make these cheap PCB prototypes, so we could first make some tests, and then, when we have all the results, we can design a new and better PCB. So having these PCBs for only $2 will help me a lot. So guys, this is my design of a charging module for 3.7V LiPo or Lion batteries. It has a battery protection for overcharge that will stop the charging process at 4.2V, over discharge below 2.6V and a short circuit protection. It has a charging current limit of 580 milliamps, and it has a double output for 5 volts and 12 volts. The maximum current should be around 2 amps, and like this I could use this PCB for my projects and have directly everything that I need on the same PCB. I hope that you like this project and that you have learned something new. Make sure that you take a look over the datasheet of each IC, and the links are below. Also check more information, the schematic and the Gerbers for the PCB on my webpage, electronoops.com. If my work is helping you, consider supporting my videos on Patreon, where you can see my projects days before the YouTube release, 
see photos of the project that I'm working on, behind the camera videos, some giveaways and much more. Your Patreon help is very important for me. Also make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. So thanks again and see you later guys.